Finishing games faster is the holy grail of indie game development. By finishing more stuff, you not only boost your game design XP, but you also decrease your investment cost, which can lead to more money. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all seven of the things that had the most profound impact on the 30 plus games I've made over the last decade and the speed at which I was somehow able to get them across the finish line. And if you can make games faster, you can increase your ability to actually get over that finish line, which let's be honest, it's one of the hardest things I ever did. So I've done things wrong. I've wasted a shitload of time on dumb stuff and I've been down more rabbit holes than a magician hat factory. And I want to make sure you avoid those rabbit traps and you've got the tricks up your sleeve you need to build, finish and launch better games. So my name is Tim Rosswick. Let's hop into it. Number seven, you're working on a game. You think you can get it done soon, right? Days, weeks, months, years, shit happens. <laughs> Games take longer than you think they will. And that's what time-limited development solves. So this tip is about adopting a game jam mindset. So what is that? Now, in normal development for creative projects like games, you might start with an idea. In your mind, you're like, I'll just keep working on it. And then when it's finished, I'll launch it. That's when the launch date is, when it's done. The problem is, done's not real. Sorry to tell you, finishing is an imaginary illusion that doesn't exist. I know a lot of game developers. I know a lot of people that make games. None of them consider the games finished. But launched, published... Those are metrics that you can use uh, to actually track whether or not you've released games. Now, time-limited development switches that whole thing up. What if you started with the deadline? What if you said, this is going to be a three-month game, and whatever I release at the end of that, that's what's getting released. Now, this forces you to make iterations quickly. It forces you to keep scope down. It forces all kinds of interesting little things that you normally wouldn't get out of unlimited time. But the trick here is you have to be able to trust yourself. So if you're just going to get to the end of the time limit and just be like, well... I could use another three months. It'll be fine. It's not going to work. One of my top tips for this is aligning your launch date, publish date, whatever it is with an event. So it might be a Steam festival. It might be the beginning of October. It might be Halloween, for example. But just kind of keeping that date and, and having an external date that you have to stick to is helpful. You can also do time box experiments within the game itself. So rather than say, oh, I'm going to try out this new jetpack feature, uh, you can say, I have one hour to prototype this jetpack feature and see if it works. Or, you know, 10 hours, five hours, whatever it is. That's going to keep your scope down and help you actually finish stuff. Tip number six. So my friend Bim is making this game called Moon Dancer, right? And it's a beautiful two-bit adventure game that takes place on the moon. And I was helping him work on it for a few months because I thought it was a really cool project. But one of the annoyances we have with that game, it's very atmospheric. So the movement is very slow to sort of add to that mystery and atmosphere. We both wanted to tweak the movement because we wanted to make it faster. But my experience told me, no, the movement's perfect. We need ways to move around this faster because we're getting used to it. So we did a couple really cool things. We implemented a set of debug controls. So one, if you hold control and you hit the arrow keys, you can skip back and forth between the different scenes. And two, if you're holding control and you click anywhere with the mouse, you can actually teleport the character to where that mouse is at. This saved us a ton of time debugging. That's why this tip is to build in debug tools and modes. It saves you a lot of time during development. You look at some of the time consuming things up front and you build in debug tools to actually make it happen. And this stuff doesn't have to ship with the game. We actually wrote a little piece of code to make sure it's only in the preview version of the game. And this applies to all sorts of things like you spam console logs everywhere. Did you know you can probably color code them and categorize them? Or you can add a global variable in the game called debug mode. There's a lot of little things you can do with this, but if you're working on a project for a long time, you're going to be doing a lot of debugging and you should make your life easier. Tip number five, you're deep in a code, you're looking at the movement function, you're trying to add that jetpack, and you see something. You see a little bug in the jump that has been irking you for a long time. It's only going to take 10 minutes. It's not going to be that difficult. You can change it right now, right? So this one, don't chase it, record it. So many times, there are so many things that I find in my code that I want to optimize, fix, increase, decrease, debug, add, polish, whatever. And it's almost always a trap. So what I've started doing is I log all these things that I see. I record them. I make notes of them in the code. If if the, the jump doesn't work right, I'll add a comment right there in the jump that says this doesn't work right because of whatever. But I'll keep doing what I was doing. Because one, it might not take 10 minutes. It might take 10 hours. Let's be real. Two, you're going to forget what you were doing. And three, it's not important right now. Don't follow the rabbit hole. Just record it. Keep it organized to find it later. So if you have focus issues or ADHD or that sort of thing, this is definitely a tip for you because it's exactly how you spend weeks getting nothing done. And the bigger the project, the worse it gets. Which, side note, if you want to make games but you don't have the time to make an entire game by yourself, Come make games with us. In DevPods, you can work on games in progress and only do the things you want to do. Like, I don't know, adding unique dialogue to every single cat in the game. Plus, we've got project leads that will keep the game on track and make sure it ships on time every time. To take the pressure off, stop beating yourself up, and make games the fun way, head over to devpods.gg, use code TIM for 50% off your first month. But anyway... Uh, number four got me a few times. So you're building a super awesome feature, right? Let's say it's a vehicle, and you're trying to parent the wheels to the vehicle, but you don't know how to do that. Where's the menu at? 
You got to go looking for it. Oh, there's probably a hotkey for this. You'll look it up later. You just need to find the menus. Oh, wait, you need to animate the lights. There's probably a hotkey for that too. But you'll look it up later, right? Mm -hmm. Master your tool shortcuts and hotkeys. 100%, this is super important. Google it right now. Whatever tool you use, Godot, Unity, Blender, whatever mm -hmm. it is, look up hotkeys, print it out, old school. <laughs> Keep post-it notes, do something. Because these hotkeys are going to save you so much time over the entire project. I promise you, if you're new and you learn the hotkeys, you will significantly improve the speed of your development. Adjacent to this, there's getting to know the tools themselves. So working on a bunch of little things, trying game jams, trying things that make you use the tools to get familiar with the tools, incredibly important. Knowing your tools well can significantly increase the speed of your development. But the skill of knowing which tool to use for which application is also incredibly important. So do that and stuff. So tip number three, you ever sit around knowing you should work on your game, but you don't, but you think about it a lot, right? Like you could totally like design that thing in your head and just think about doing it eventually when you do it. Or maybe you pretend you need to play more Hollow Knight So Song for research. No, just me. When I'm procrastinating, most of the time, I find it's because I don't know exactly what I should be doing. So that's why this tip to do favors for your future self. I found that if I take five minutes at the end of my work session to plan the next one, it's significantly easier for me to get started. Because I've written down exactly what I should do and what I should focus on. Now, you don't have to stick to it. You can sit down when inspiration strikes and work on the garden part of your game or whatever it is. But when you don't know what to do, when you're procrastinating, if you can just sit down and have a list of things to do exactly, it's incredibly helpful. It really helps eliminate friction and make the new starting point way easier. And I got a couple little bonus tips for this too. Sometimes I like to stop in the middle of doing something. And I know that sounds counterintuitive because you want to stop like after you finish the feature or whatever. But that sense of completion can actually linger for weeks. And I find like weeks might go by without me working on thing. But if I stop directly in the middle of me trying that feature, I can't stop thinking about it and I'm much more likely to go into it. So if I finish that feature and start a new feature and stop in the middle of that feature, X. also keeping your project open is, is a good one for that works for me. Not everybody can do this, different workstations, different lives, all that stuff, obviously. Especially when I'm working on like electronics, not just games, having the project open with all the parts everywhere is super easy for me to get back into. And then generally just a general initiative to make your mm -hmm. life better tomorrow is a great way to look at life. You're going to wake up in the same body, but a different person, a different biochemical makeup, a different mood all that stuff so doing that person a favor can really really help your life be a little bit easier by just saying oh he's gonna face the dishes tomorrow i better do them now he's gonna hate fixing that bug so i'm gonna go ahead and fix this for him right now then he's not worried about it tomorrow tip number two so i have a stream deck right and I use it for all kinds of stuff, specifically for shortcuts and, and hotkeys and all kinds of things that I really like to use in my software. But every time I put my computer to sleep, which is every day, it would wake up and the software wouldn't reboot. So literally every time I woke my computer up from sleep, I'd have to close Stream Deck software and reopen it. I did this for two years until I finally asked ChatGPT to write me a script to kill it on wake and reboot it, solved it instantly. <laughs> my life has been so much better because I was getting so infuriated about the damn 10 seconds it took to reboot that software every time. And that's why this tip is to permanently solve small problems. So how long is your build time every time you build the game? If it's two minutes, what if you could make it a minute every time you preview the game? Does your audio blast every time you hit preview? What if you had an auto mute option? Whatever the small problems are in your life, if you can permanently solve them, you'll live a better life and you'll make games faster. Or maybe I'm just a disgruntled old man. I don't know. I can't tell anymore. And tip number one, you ever feel resistance to your workspace? Or maybe you just don't want to work on your project? Maybe you sit down and procrastinate a bunch. You end up watching stuff on YouTube. There's a good chance you just need to spruce up your work environment. So this is broken into three micro tips. First of which, have an actual work environment if you can. I know people that do their game dev on their kitchen table. If that's what you got, understandable. But if you can try to find a place in a corner somewhere behind the couch somewhere you can do it i'm lucky enough to have my own office it's pretty great but find a place that you can repeatedly control because it's going to be pretty important and once you've got a space you want to keep that space clean and ready to work i'm a little bit messy my projects get messy i don't like to clean stuff up but having a clean work environment has been so critically important to me that i've learned to do it because the benefits far outweigh the Cons, pros, cons, whatever. For the mm. items you use every day, buy the highest quality you can afford. Definitely want a good chair. Definitely want a good water cup. I bought this 64 ounce beast a long time ago. Keeps me hydrated. I love this chair. It's a big and tall chair because I'm a big and tall dude. And then mm. in your office space, surround yourself with things you love. Uh, fidget toys. I got these massive ass dice. I also keep a bunch of gear and pocket knives and stuff. And that's not to mention all the cool stuff I have behind me. I, this is all nostalgia for me. I got board games I love. I got games I love. I got the skulls of fellow game dev YouTubers. You know, 
I just got a bunch of shit back there that I like. It makes me happy. I'm just, I'm weird like that. But one thing I do know is my work environment has been incredibly important to my productivity. So if you, if you want to finish games faster, I highly recommend that you have a good space to work that you like. But now I want to talk about a bonus tip that has really transcended my game development. It's made me make games better, faster, and easier. And that's finding and connecting with the right people. If you feel alone in game dev, feel unmotivated, you feel behind, feel like you got a voice in your head that says you're not good enough, chances are you need to be surrounded by the right people. Good people who encourage you, they'll wish you luck, they'll want the best for you, they'll be honest with you, they'll give you real feedback, and they don't have to be in person, they can be online. So I highly recommend you find a community that you love. I've got a link to my Discord down there, it's been kind of dead for the last couple of years because I haven't really posted YouTube videos. You can come hang out with us if you want, but there are plenty of great communities online. And then another shout out to DevPods, if you want to make games with teams, uh, you can head over to devpods.gg, but... Find the place that you belong because that's going to be incredibly important. So fist bump the like button, share with your friends, do whatever the YouTubers say to do these days, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.